Hello and welcome. Today we're going to go meet our friends M from Lana Bagu. M, our oh, classes started raining. Uh, we've known M for some time now. She was one of the first people to come in the first Lazy Joes way back when in Middlesbrough. She is now a printmaker who specialises in lino printing. She's uh, going to be at the flea market as one of the vendors, so we're really excited to get her on board, as well as having a really good lineup of vendors. Um, it's got a rescheduled date now of the flea market is Saturday the 9th of October. Um, we'll be posting all sorts in our Instagram beforehand. Um, so if you haven't already, check it out and let's go say hello. So now we've got a full size chair sorted for me <laughs> and we have the doggy sorted. We'll be ready to talk to M <clears throat> about joining us at the flea market um, on the 9th of October. So we're in M's being nice enough to let us in a house to show around a studio. Um, as you can see this is all behind us and uh, yeah we're going to go through and kind of talk about that. Um, so can you show us around, oh sorry, first of all, welcome. Hi. Thanks for having us in your house. No problem. Um, could you show us around kind of what you do here, um, uh, what's up here for kind of someone like me who doesn't really know? Okay. <laughs> oh, <don't worry>. Sorry. <laughs> Get down, come on. Stop. <laughs> Leave. Come Come here. <laughs> 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 Sorry, as you were. Yeah, uh, I guess. So, I've got like just loads of stuff that I've accumulated over the years. I started out with like a really cheap set of things. I don't know if, I don't know if I have them anymore. But, um, yeah, I've just gradually got upgraded. So these tools are like 12 quid a pop. Oof. Um, I had some cheap plastic palette knives, now I have nice ones. Um, so have you just kind of, um, pick stuff up as you've gone on and as you've progressed and kind of you've needed stuff so you just like yeah. accumulate more stuff. So when I first started I literally had a tube of gold ink and a tube mm -hmm. of black ink and now I've got like a 500 gram pot of black. Ball in there. And then the, the 500 gram gold, where is it? Is it already out? Oh, I don't know, but that's like 50 quid for one dollar. What? It's freaking ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, rollers, I started with these two, which clearly I can't bother cleaning anymore. Mm. Um, I just kept buying more. This one's the, the big one. It's the daddy. Yeah. Um, I just, yeah, my first print, Luke's got my first print. My first print was my chrysanthemum, which is just like a one layer. Ah, class. So you carve out the block, mm -hmm. which I have here as well. So. So that's like carved out. Sweet. Um, and obviously not cleaned because I can't oh, wow. anymore. And then I just gradually tried to make them more and more complex mm -hmm. by like cutting out different layers and stuff, but out of the same piece of lino. So then I made this guy. So it's like one piece of lino that I've cut into different pieces and then cut back into and then printed it again a different colour. That's not mine, that's Matt Pringle, he's amazing. Wow. Um, and then I bought, I think you have to buy like stuff to sharpen your tools with, which is stuff you don't really think about at the beginning. Mm. So many components. Everyone thinks this is a butt plug, but it's like a glass baron for printing with. It was made by a local guy called Sean, who does glass stuff. Cool. And what kind of stuff are you going to be bringing to the market? This is my bag of prints for the market. It's out because I've done one recently. But I've got like, so I've got my mermaids. I have one of those. 
You've got one of those Still not friend. <laughs> it's fine. I have so many unframed pieces from like amazing artists. Oh, same one. I've got my empresses. Nice. Which took me three months to make. Whoa. <laughs> Big boy. Um, I've got my weatherman, who are like my favourite ones ever. You've already seen that mm. one, friend. And I have like a ton of teeny tiny prints that are just like. Oh, that's um, cool. They're all framed up there. Like well, some of them are. Oh, yeah, they're like sick frames. Yeah, they're like £1.50 from Ikea. Nice. So people always try and buy the framed ones at market, so I'm like, nah, they're £1.50. There you go, if you didn't so hear that, £1.50 Ikea. Yeah, the print's not that cheap, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The frame is so sweet. That's like my motto, expensive art, cheap frames. And that's where you hang it up to dry? That's, yeah, all my drying <clears> stuff. Um, I eventually had to make a bigger space for it because I was making a huge print. Oh, well, yeah. So that's, they're, they're not printed on yet, that's just the paper ready. And when did you start doing this? Uh, just under 18 months ago. Mm. So, yeah, it was like first lockdown. I just started printing. Like, right, I printed, okay. I printed at uni. Yeah. But then um, I fell in love with screen printing at uni. I'll show you my screen prints actually. So, yeah, I fell in love with screen printing at uni. Made like oh, this mad fishy guy. But then, once I'd graduated, I didn't have the facilities to... Wait, you screened this? Yeah, yeah, it's four layers. So, like, the And layer... did you do multi-coloured paint on this layer? Yeah, and so it's just spread. one layer. Wow. You throw loads of different colours yeah, on and then yeah. pull it through. So I've got a couple like that. There's it's something I've always wanted to get into. When We've always done it on, like, T-shirts, and screen printing has always been, like, my favourite. Just because, yeah. like, the technique and the yeah. hands, you know, and the guy I use, it's all... It's in his um, his lockup, and you go down and see and see the lads doing it. Like there's yeah. something um, kind of like special about it, like just natural yeah, like rather than like tactile. Like, yeah, yeah, like, and the skilled like people that yeah. are doing it. I find that like it takes a lot more space and money to make screen prints like that. Yeah. So that's why I started doing lino. Yeah, because I could achieve similar effects from this amount of space. Mm -hmm. I don't have to like strip screens, print negatives or positives. Yeah, true. What they're called. Um, yeah, it's all very. I can do it by hand from start to finish. Mm -hmm. So it feels a lot more like I'm an analog gal. Love it. So I like it. Yeah. And you got the heat press as well. Yeah, I got the heat press, which I <laughs> I don't actually use, yeah. but I've got some heat transfer vinyl recently. All right. Yeah. So yeah. I will be carving out some stuff. Ah, to, do some magic with that. Yeah, because it's like another it. way that I can make T-shirts again without it being screen. Mhm. Mm so looking forward to that. Um, and your name as well. Um, yeah. Lana Bagu, right? Lana Bagu, yeah. It's I don't know. <laughs> it used to be something else, and then I like outgrew it. So I try to switch it to something. That, like encapsulates me and like my pets are everything mm -hmm. so it's a mashup of my pets names nice and what's your pets names luna basil and naga luna basil <laughs> naga oh yeah that naga good boy um okay cool well how about we um get some paint out mix it up yeah and uh yeah see what we can do <laughs> and you do uh tattoo design as well i do i'm an apprentice uh tattoo artist um, and were you doing that before you were drawing? Um, well, I went to art for college. Yourself. Sorry. I went to CCAD and did art college, and then mm -hmm. I went to Leeds College of Art and did illustration. So I've done fine art and illustration. I've kind of known I wanted to be a tattoo artist since I was about 15. Mm. But um, I don't know, I've turned down the opportunity a couple of times because I just didn't feel like my art was there yet. Mm -hmm. And then the opportunity came around after I started printing, and I was like, okay. Let's do it. But I had been like designing tattoos for years, but it just, yeah, printing just took over. And you see it as like a seamless transition? No, it? not at all. No. So different. Is it? Yeah, they're very different things. But I don't, like like I said, I have been designing tattoos for years. Yeah. So I do, I'm comfortable doing it, but after spending 18 months like sat at this desk yeah. <laughs> printing, <laughs> and now not having the time to, it's like crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, printing became my life, like, well and truly. Gosh. But 
and I'll wear that tag will be in my life for a while. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully I can like print in between, like when there's quieter seasons. Yeah. It's like um, tattooing gets pretty dead around Christmas. Mm -hmm. So that'll be my print on season. Right, okay. So well, that'd be good for doing markets and stuff, yeah, right? Christmas markets. Yeah. When people actually got money. Yeah. Yeah. And they actually want to buy things. Yeah, yeah. Like nice things. Well, this is perfect for like little things like gifts and stuff like that. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah, I do love a, I do quite a lot of festive markets. I had um, a mum and her daughter come up to me. And she was going to her daughter, I don't want that one, do I? And I was like, don't say that, why are you saying that for? And then the mum walked away and the daughter bought her up. And that's oh. why she was saying it. She was saying, like, I shouldn't buy this. Oh, shit, right, yeah, yeah. Because you are going to buy it for me. Oh, nice. <laughs> and they do that every year, so I've met them <laughs> twice now. <laughs> Very cute. So what's that machine called? This is an antique book press. Actually, it's not a machine, is it? Right. Well, I don't know. Is it? Antique book press. Oh, book press. Yeah, yeah. I used to have one that my dad built me from like a carjack and some plywood. Ah, but so I still have it. Where did you find that? There. Mm -hmm. eBay. Was it Spenny? Yeah, but I haggled them down a bit. Yeah. Yeah, so then. I, I just thought it was a, like a decoration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like weird but it, was it was advertised as um, garden furniture. I think that's why I like got oh, like, it. So they probably took it out and didn't know what it was? No, no, they definitely knew what it was. <laughs> but yeah, it was advertised as garden furniture. <laughs> Which is fine on me. Yeah, that's the best when they don't know what it is. <clears throat> uh, I did more white to pink because it was too dark. And then this is for your um, business cards? Yeah. It's incredible work to put into business cards. I know, but it doesn't make sense for me to get them printed. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like, it doesn't suit me. Mm, yeah, I know what you mean. And as well, as much as this is like effort, it's it's cheap. Like, I can yeah. afford to do it. I've already yeah. got everything I need here. Because I make I make them from like offcuts and scraps. Right. And obviously the ink goes a long way. And whatever I don't use goes into tubs for another time. So while I'm as broke as I am, mm. it makes sense for me to just do everything myself. And it's in line with, um, you know, what you do and your brand. brand, what you stand for. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I actually just got some samples back from um, digital printers. Oh yeah. Because I'm gonna have to get some stuff digitally printed mm. for like galleries and people that want my work but don't want to pay. So like the big one I showed you. Yeah. I sold that for 320 quid. Yeah, so people you did that from scratch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's people that like want my work but obviously don't want to pay that much. Yeah. So I'll get like digital replicas made. Mm -hmm. And then everyone's happy. Exactly. But it's fine. <sighs> Sacrifices and whatnot. Yeah. I guess you must get to that stage though, um, where people want your stuff and, you know, it must be quite, not maybe difficult, but there must be like some to and fro of like, when do you when do you make that move? If yeah. you do make that move. Well, I was supposed to put my work into a gallery and the things they wanted, I only had like three or four off. Mm. And I'm quite attached to my limited edition stuff. Like, um, I don't really want, like I want people that like follow me and support me to get that, to get the limited edition things. Yeah. Where if it's just like a stranger in a gallery, it's like, oh, that's pretty. Like, I'm, they can have it, but I don't want them to have that thing that I value even more. Yeah. I don't know if that's like snobby. <laughs> Oops. Nah, at the end of the day, it's your work and only you know what you put into it. Yeah. It's a little bit awkward getting around here sometimes, especially when all the animals are in here. Where are the two cats? They'll be on my bed. <sighs> they don't, they're not as guest friendly as the right, dog. Right. Do they all get on? Yeah, yeah. Especially when Basil's hungry, yeah. he'll rub himself on over the nagger. He'll be like, oh, come on, be nice to the dog. Oh. Give me food now, please. Yeah. <laughs> and then, whenever I try and catch it on camera, it stops immediately. Oh, that's This is over inked to be honest. There should be less ink on these blocks, but that tends to happen with the first few. Until my ink's smoothed out properly. Mm. 
I like the colours you use as well. Thanks. Yeah, I've got some um, business cards I made before. And I just like to switch up the colours every time. So I quite like that one. Oh, yeah. So eventually it'll end up all stamped up and have my name on it and that. Nice. That one didn't really work. I like the colours, but you can't see my name on it. Mm. But, oh well. The first uh, picture on Lazy oh Joe's God, of me. <laughs> Instagram page. Which, oh. they, we just realised again in the car. Um, so yeah, so, if anyone wants to scroll back all <laughs> the way through Lazy Joe's Instagram, which is probably going to take you a while. I was 16, so 16. It's, a de it's a decade ago. No way! Oh, wait, was I seven? I must be 17, so yeah. Nine, Nine years, years ago. ago. Mm -hmm, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's how long ago. So if anyone's got a few hours to burn and <laughs> a lot of Wi-Fi, let's go right back to the first Lazy Joe's. Yeah, see like, so that's over because you've got like little bumps and like marks you don't want. But, yeah. I kind of prefer the colour to that one at least, so progress. And then they'll just get better as I go on, in theory. <laughs> the inks I use are oil based, yeah. so to clean them up, I um, dissolve them with oil, like just cheap vegetable mm. oil, and then clean it with fiery liquid. It comes off pretty easy, but I'm an idiot and I always like let everything dry on, uh, and then it's not easy to clean on. Right, I see. But as well, like I have quite a few panels of glass, so in preparation for this video, I put the dirty one in the kitchen. Right. <laughs> so this was clean, now I have two to clean. Mint. <laughs> But I, I do enjoy it, I find it very like therapeutic. Mm. I enjoy challenging myself, so I like trying to make more difficult prints every time. So I'll show you like the block I've got coming up next. Yeah. I actually drew this one before I printed that guy, but I just wanted to make sure I was going to get it right before I started it, so he hasn't been done yet. Sweet. <laughs> well, um, Naga, thank you so much for having us in your house, in your beautiful studio, showing us around. Tell us what you do. Um, and yeah, we're going to be really looking Go forward to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to having you at the flea market thank in you. October. I'm looking um, forward to being there. Thank you. Um, yeah, so if you want to check it out, you know what it is.